Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel. We are here to start a new show. This is the first episode of The Last of Us. This is probably my most anticipated show in quite some time on this channel. I say that a lot, but this time I mean it. Um, this is the show about, like the live action show, uh, based on, in my opinion, the two greatest games of all time in The Last of Us Part 1 and The Last of Us Part 2. Yes, I'm one of those people that loves Part 2 to death. Probably, I think I might like it more than Part 1. I have personally played through uh, the first Last of Us three times and I've watched like six other people play it on YouTube. Um, it's one of my guilty pleasures is watching people play that game because it's just like, especially the first 15 minutes, it's just heartbreaking. Um, and so I'm so excited to watch this. Um, from everything I've heard, it's incredible. And I'm really, really excited to see how Pedro Pascal does and how Bella Ramsey does. Um, they're both fantastic actors, probably most well known from like Game of Thrones for Bella Ramsey. Um, but we obviously know, uh, Pedro from The Mandalorian, um, from a thousand other things that he's been in, in Narcos. Um, you know, he's a prolific actor, very good at playing the, the dad that has to take care of an adoptive child, pretty much. <laughs> so he's perfect for this role. I'm also personally really excited to see, uh, all the little subtle changes that they bring to the show compared to the game, because I know it's not going to be, like, just direct direct pull from the game because there's not enough <laughs> if they want to make a full-fledged show out of it they got to add some backstory they got to add some extra scenes here and there um but neil Druckmann was uh i believe showrunner on this uh, or co-showrunner at least with uh craig mazin who did um the uh chernobyl miniseries and that was incredible so if if this is even remotely the same quality we are eating good in the playstation fandom <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also been rumors of, uh, Last of Us Part 3 in development, so, like, everything is just coming up Millhouse <laughs> right now. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, I'm just so freaking pumped. I love this story so much. It's probably the best, you know, single story ever told in video games. Um, and I'm, I'm, I can't say enough how much this story has made me cry <laughs> like like 20 different times I've bawled my eyes out uh, because of The Last of Us so I think it's about that time to jump into it so before we do jump into this first episode if you end up enjoying my reaction please leave a like on the video it means a ton to me helps my channel grow a lot if you're new here or find yourself coming back often hit subscribe ring the bell so you're notified when I upload especially if you want to see me react to the rest of The Last of Us or maybe if you want to see me play some PlayStation games on the channel I'm playing through God of War Ragnarok right now so if you're interested in that definitely find those um, and then if you're interested in seeing the full uncut version of this reaction consider checking out my patreon that is linked in the description below since this is the first episode of a season that uncut will be completely free and public for anyone to check out and if you find that that's something you're interested in going forward then your support would mean the world um, sometimes on patreon i also post reactions slightly early so if you're interested in that um, definitely consider checking it out linked in the description um, but otherwise i think that's all i gotta say so let's jump into the very first episode of the last of us on hbo i'm getting a little nervous to start this because of air travel through the air coffee uh, i'm sorry i meant people on planes uh, that was something you described in your book yes yeah, a new virus in madagascar cordyceps and, uh, Dr. Newman, you're also an epidemiologist. I, presume I recognize this actor in the viral middle. pandemic keeps you up at night as well. No. No? Oh, I no. recognize him, too. All right, well, that's our show. <laughs> He's from uh, Spartacus and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Fungus. Yes, that's the usual response. Fungi seem harmless enough. Many species know otherwise, because there are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. Viruses can make us ill, but fungi can alter our very minds. There's a fungus that infects insects, gets inside an ant. Cordyceps. Fungus starts to direct the ant's behavior, telling it where to go, what to do, like a puppeteer with a marionette. 
The fungus needs food to live, so it begins to devour its host from within. Fungal infection of this kind is real, but not in humans. True, fungi cannot survive. He's the actual scientist in real life. Technically, this wouldn't degrees. happen. But it's a video game. What if, for instance, the world were to get slightly warmer? Well, now there is reason to evolve. One gene mutates, and an Ascomycetia, Candida, Ergot, Cordyceps, Aspergillus. Cordyceps, that's the one. And there are no treatments for this, no preventatives, no cures. They don't exist. It's not even possible to make them. So if that happens, everyone means... dies. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll be back. <laughs> this is such a sobering thought. Oh, oh, and the music. Oh. Oh, give it to me, baby. Oh, the sweet twang of that guitar. Oh, it's beautiful. And this is very reminiscent of the the credit sequence, the opening credit sequence of the first game. Oh, so this is literally the song. God, it's incredible. Ooh, the way that it formed into two people there. I'm so excited. I'm so freaking pumped. That title sequence alone was enough to get me stoked out of my mind. I was gonna make you birthday pancakes. I swear. You know, I don't really like pancakes. I know you don't like them. It's for my benefit. <laughs> it's her birthday present. How old are you again? 36. 36, wow. Yeah, or diaper soon. He says I don't already. Chill. Their opening banter is already perfect. Hey, you still alive, you old fucker? What's no, up, Ghost Rider? He loves you. He's dependent on me. Not the same. I think it's the same. It's definitely the same. Why was having pancakes? Jakarta. Where is that? Middle East? It doesn't ring a bell. It's definitely a country. Maybe part of Asia. Jakarta isn't a country. It's a city, right? Capital of Indonesia. Yeah. She hope for us yet. He's already so that line delivery right there was quintessential Tommy. Your t-shirt's inside out. Shit. He's losing it. God, he's actually so good as Tommy. Like he sounds exactly like him. What, you taking his money to buy him a watch? Does that count? We got a lot of extra here. Y'all want some biscuits? Y'all want some biscuits? biscuits. <laughs> Just shoves that into her mouth. We gotta run, but Sarah will be by later. She'll stay as long as you want. Tell you all about Atkins. Great, I'll let Connie know. <laughs> Uh, I can tell you how exciting it was listening to that fucking conversation. But... He's so good. That's weirdly the best casting so far is Diego Luna as Tommy. Yes, you need to know this. Yes, it's on your test next week. Homework is due. End of class tomorrow. Ooh, that homework is not happening. This is going to be devastating watching her die. They're in Dallas or Austin? It's a spring. I'll do it right now. So she just fixes the watch? She doesn't get him a new one? All day. I swear. I'm very sorry. He cannot finish. I'm work. already finished. You should go home. Dang, this lady knows stuff that Sarah doesn't know. 
There was just a lot of police and stuff on the road today. Well, that's true every day, isn't it? People out there need what, to get... What, you British? Jesus. In it? Three nails that's facts. One cross facts. Get right with Jesus. Given. Chocolate chip? Raisins. Oh, God, she did say raisin. It's the worst kind of cookie. I'd rather you just slap me in the face and tell me you hate me than give me a raisin cookie. What? I swear to God, lady, if you're already turning right now. Hey, Mrs. Adler, could I borrow this? That's freaky. Poor little puppy. Set the dog free first. Pretty sure that's the dog we hear cry in the game right away. Dang. Straight up scrambling fighter jets. You got me prison? Swear. Oh, I just know I'm gonna be devastated. <laughs> she took like three hundred dollars to. <laughs> Did you pay twenty? What? I don't hear anything. <laughs> Where'd you get the money for this? Drugs. Drugs. Awesome. So hardcore drugs. drugs. Yes. It's only like twenty dollars. The chest stole from you. She stole more than twenty dollars. <laughs> you were never gonna do it for yourself. Thank you. Joel's not the best at taking care of himself. Barred from the Adlers. Oh, this is the one with the deleted scenes. Yeah, imagine how bad those have to be. Come on, pop it in. Curtis Viper? The old people have this movie? Don't fall asleep. Of course I won't. Oh, she, she, never she will, definitely. Immediate cut to her sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Joel's rocking a Nokia? That thing will last all the way through the apocalypse. Joel, it's me. Uh, I'm okay. Yeah? But I'm in jail. Dude, he, he sounds just like Tommy. About three hours later. <laughs> I'm getting a little... Already getting a little bit emotional. I'm gonna be gushing over this <laughs> the whole series. I'm gonna be calling out these little, little moments. Where's the moment where the gas station explodes and we press the buttons to look at it? And we'll be in contact with further instructions. <laughs> Puppy. Rip to that dog. Ah, uh, you're <laughs> you're beyond saving, dude. That's gross. Oh. Yeah, get the heck out of Dodge. Get the truck! Right now! Move! Oh.
What are we doing, Joe? Shoot her. Oh. The wrench works, too. We killed her. Baby, I'm sorry. Joe, we gotta go. Sarah, listen to me. It's not just the Adlers. But we're gonna be brave, and we're gonna be battles. Hey. You get back inside the house! You lock your doors now! Come on, come on, get in! Oh, this is the viewpoint from the game, too. Get your seatbelt on. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, brother, you're de you're dead, brother. <laughs> Take 70. 70. Oh. Show me that burning barn, please. Oh. It's Jimmy's place. God, it looks so good. They got kids, Joel. So do we. Keep driving. Got a kid, Joel. So Keep driving. Keep driving. Oh, Look at them in the back. Come along. That makes me think of Logan. Someone has come along. What the fuck? Lane. Oh. There's like multiple planes. Holy cow. Line delivery. I can't fucking drive through them, Joe. And like it hit. All right, keep going, keep going. Oh, shit. oh I thought that was the moment. I thought that was the moment. I can't drive through them. Are you serious? Just keep going. I'm like already right, gonna start crying. Like, purely from the fact that this is being visualized on screen right now. Oh, listing. That plane's listing. Dad? Oh, shit. It's subtle changes, it's subtle changes, but it's, oh. Jesus. Don't look. Oh, you look at me, okay? Sorry, baby. Oh, her leg. Come here, come here. Oh, I can already, I got a, the briefest tease of that cry and I'm already gonna, oh. Are you okay? My ankle. Right. Okay. We gotta get off the street. Oh. Good thing you got the heck out of that. Head of the river, I'll find a way. <sighs> oh, I can already feel it. I can feel it. Oh. Dedicated stunt actor, holy cow. Just tripping on everything. Don't move. Oh no, no. Not as hurt. Her ankle. Stop right there. We're not sick. We're not sick. Sir, we are not sick! Oh. I'm 
sorry. Please stop. <laughs> God, every time. You're okay. You're okay. Move uh, your hand, baby. Move your hand. No. I know, baby. I know, I know, I know, I know. Come on, baby. You're okay. You're okay. I know, I know, I know, I know, baby, I know, I know. Oh. I know this hurts. You're gonna be okay. All right. Oh. You come on. You come on. I know, baby. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Tommy, help me! Joe. She's gone. Come on, baby girl. <laughs> come on, baby girl. I gotta get you. Every time, every time. Oh. I can't imagine the people that don't know what The Last of Us is. You look like a regular kid, dang. It's been devastated. Ooh, she's red. Ah, that's... After we gave you some medicine, I'm gonna find you your favorite food to eat. Would you like that? And then we'll get you some new clothes. <sighs> You're safe. Ugh. He can. He's become calloused. <sighs> Fireflies. Look for the light. What's all that for? Or I could just shoot you. You're short five. What's that? Chicken? I just got a factory down there in the QZ. Supposedly only makes two things. Pills and bullets. Bullets and pills. The more you shoot people, the harder it is to sleep, I guess. Pills help you upgrade your skills. <laughs> what do you want me to say, Tess? Oh, is this who I think it is? It's not like I planned on ripping you off. I'm sorry. Well, Anna Torv from Fringe. What do you want? I want you to forget this ever happened. Done. You don't do that. What? It's just a truck battery. I paid you for it. You sold it to someone else, and you spend my money. I mean, you think I've never done shit like that? Cut off her finger or whatever the fuck you want. I don't care that you're fucking guys. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Was not expecting that explosion. Gimme Ellie. Yes. 
Count slowly and clearly from one to ten. One, two, three, four. Slowly and clearly. One. Fuck you. Wow. And hold out your... I think that counts. If Tommy responded, we'd know. It hasn't been that long. It's been three weeks. It's never taken him more than a day to respond. I'm sure he's okay. He's found a new lady friend named Maria. Show me where the tower is. You can't be serious. J Joel, it's in Wyoming. Plastered. <clears throat> Damn, son. I want to ease up there, J Dog. Oh, oh. The broken watch. I wonder how far the first episode will take us. The guys who jumped me were with Robert. He sold our battery to someone else. Nothing's lost. This shit like this is gonna happen. <clears throat> I need you to take a breath. Yeah, if you, if you want him, you gotta be chill about it. Who did he sell it to? Don't know. Well, where is he? The Fireflies. No, I promised Robert that you wouldn't hurt him. <laughs> But I would very much like for you to hurt him. Yes. So let's go hunt that motherfucker down. Yes. Damn straight. And then we'll go find Tommy. All right? Facts, Tess. Facts. I want Fedra everywhere but here. I want them as distracted as possible because tonight, every Firefly in Boston is going to gather in this building and you're going to leave the QZ permanently. Really? We're quitting. Oh, well, you got Ellie, so. Is this real? I believe it is. You best believe. Hey, friend. Hello. But if you're feeling lost. You tell me to look for the light and I'll break your jaw. <laughs> Ellie, you're not strong enough. <laughs> so funny seeing little Le Liana Mormont dropping f bombs. Is it gonna happen? No. So can I go? No. They put me there when I was a baby. It's for orphans. They didn't put you there. I did. Ellie. She knows who you are. My fucking mom or something? <laughs> you don't look like her. Yeah. Why would you terrorists dump me with Fedra? Because it's where you'd be safest, and you were safe there until you decided to sneak out. And terrorist? Was Riley a terrorist? Was Riley a firefly? You have a greater purpose than any of us could have ever imagined. You're meant for something more, Ellie. Oh! Oh! Oh, shit. Spooky. Yeah. Gunpowder. There's a body in front of that. Yes. Oh snap, he's already dead. Oh, this was this is the firefly spot. Zone tonight. 
but we won't make it anywhere like this. You're gonna do it. The hell I'm not we going are. with them. Let me take her. To <laughs> Screw you, lady. Who is she? To you, she's cargo. We don't smuggle people. I can do it. Kim, you don't have a fucking ear on your fucking head, could you please? <laughs> Kim? Oh, Kim she doesn't have an ear for real. I thought she was just saying she doesn't know how to listen. And I know what you're both capable of. For better or worse. What are they capable of? Eh. <sighs> Some bad things, Ellie. Joel's done stuff. Asshole! <laughs> Oh, it's kind of fun seeing them be somewhat have some animosity between each other, given their uh, what happens in their relationship. Joel. <laughs> they do not like each other at the moment. What are you doing? Killing time. Well, what am I supposed Killing to do? I'm sure you'll figure that out. Your watch is broken. He's aware. Oh, the just the subtle hints of sound. He's dreaming about Sarah. So what's the deal with you anyway? You some kind of big wig's daughter or something? Something like that. <laughs> I wrote this show. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm actually outside. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, Got the direct imagery. What the hell? Oh, put your dick away, buddy. You got oh. him shitting me. It's you. Risk my job for half off. Oh, Ellie. Ellie. Oh, Ellie. Whoa. We can fix this. We ain't got that kind of time, brother. Oh, he's having flashbacks. PTSD stuff. No! I am not sick! No! I'm not sick! No! Look! Look! This is three weeks old! Nobody lasts more than a day! No! Oh, it's, and then it's gonna pan up to the skyscrapers, isn't it? <laughs> yes, give me those skyscrapers. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> oh boy. Episode one in the books and it was immaculate. Like part of it. I think a small part of it is just my immense love for the game and the story in general. Um, where maybe I'm biased, but I, I think I was gonna... If it was even remotely close <laughs> to what came in the game, I was gonna be pretty happy with it. But this was, like, legitimately really good. Um, like, holy cow. I mean, even just, like, the first... The first... Um, couple minutes the first like two two to five minutes where it's like this 1960s like interview um and it, it the the concept of the fungus that takes over everyone's brain like it was a good way to introduce what's actually happening um to the viewer like i feel i don't remember how exactly we learn what it is in the game 
Um, that might might have happened via environmental storytelling, or it might have just like been something you're supposed to know in the game. Um, but I like the idea that like early on we're introduced to what it is. Like the, the very simple way to introduce what it is, and also introduce the sense of like dread that can come with it, right? Because they're laughing it off, they're they're making it seem like, oh, this is something that would never happen. And in real life, <laughs> like like that's very much a, um, a a conversation that was had surrounding this the game when it came out. Because people are like, that's not real, right? And people are like, no, no, that is real. Like it's a it's a real virus. And it really does that to ants. Um, and the immediate response after that is, it could never happen to humans, though. Like, it's not possible. And they kind of play on that a little bit in this interview. Um, but then he takes it a step further, and he's like, you know, as we know, it couldn't happen in humans. But, like, things evolve. And this thing, if presented with the right circumstances, might be forced to evolve climate change you know the world getting warmer this fungus might need to adapt to survive and if it does and it affects people everybody's gone <laughs> like the world billions of people just off the map uh essentially like turning in, turning into an army of hosts for this fungus and you can you can feel the sense of foreboding and like just the tone from both the host of the interview, but the crowd in the interview as well, where they're like, oh, snap, like, like, don't present, give us that info. <laughs> like, that is scary. Like, they're legitimately scared. Um, like, like someone just opened their eyes to some horrific thing and like, you're just, you know, it's supposed to be freaky. Um, I liked that addition because they didn't have that in, um, they didn't have that in the game, which is, because again, I think you were supposed to know, or it's that on the box art or something, I don't remember. Um, and then right off the bat, the, the first moment where I think I got really like giddy and kind of a tad bit emotional is the opening title sequence with the, the, the oh, just the guitar, the guitar from the games. Um, who's the composer? I, it starts with, he has a, it's like, Salazar, some, I forgot. What's his name? Someone in the comments, if you're watching at this point, and you remember his name, um, put it in the comments. He's in, he, he gets a cameo in Last of Us Part Two. He pets like a dog. Um, he's fantastic on the composing. Um, and the title sequence is very reminiscent of, uh, of the, title sequence that happens immediately after Sarah's death in the game. Loved that. Really, really loved it. Um, like, already on board. Um, and then, okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about all the moments leading up to Sarah's death. And first we're going to talk about the casting. Sarah, great casting. I think she's, I, she was really, really compelling. They talked about in the post-episode discussion how, um, like a goal for this show was to make it seem as though like Sarah is the main character. Like if you didn't know anything about this story going in, you would probably assume that Sarah is the main character. Um, and so they had to make her compelling enough that you would want to follow her through the end of the season, right? And I thought Nico Parker crushed it. Like she <laughs> pulled off that like, witty like shit talking banter with her dad <laughs> like like the type where it's like I don't I don't know how to explain it like I'm not intimately familiar with that relationship like that's not how I talk to my parents but from what I've heard of people who are like like a like a child to like a single parent whether that be a, a mom or a dad sometimes they have that jokey friendship type relationship a little bit because they're it's just them right like they have to lean on each other and, and a little bit comes with like you know just razzing your dad a little bit you know <laughs> but he's razzing her right back um like her and joel they oh the chemistry was really good like just them making fun of each other prime prime very great 
Pedro Pascal, obviously fantastic casting. We know he can pull this off. He's an incredible actor. He's got the look down for Joel. He's got the gruffiness of Joel down. Um, and he, we already know he can play a, a lonely dad taking care of a kid, <laughs> right? We've seen him in The Mandalorian. Um, we know he can do it. Um, one casting that I was actually really surprised by, which, like, weirdly... Even just based on this first episode, the, the two best castings um, are Tommy and Ellie. Weirdly, like I, we, we'll talk about Ellie later, but freaking Diego Luna, Ghost Rider himself, <laughs> um, cast as Tommy. Like the first twenty minutes of this episode, he was so good. Sometimes you hear him talk, and it literally sounds exactly like Tommy from the game. I don't know how, like, and I don't, he's not, like, doing an impression either. He just, like, sounds so good. Like, he's the perfect Tommy, honestly. Like, it, <laughs> he crushed it. He crushed it. Um, and I liked that even he had a little bit of banter going on with all three of them. Like, they, right off the bat, you get the vibe that they, this is a family that, like, they're they're like they're stuck together like glue like there's nothing that's gonna separate them um and they just make fun of each other but they love each other deeply <laughs> even like friggin joel promising that sarah's gonna go visit these old people <laughs> after school he's like oh yeah she'll tell you all about atkins <laughs> it's just I, I i loved it i thought it was really great um and then just following sarah through this whole first part as she is like slowly watching like the subtle signs of the world falling apart was really nice because you're just casually following her and you know that something's really wrong but she doesn't quite know it yet um and i like that they expanded on this right like in the game the point at which you uh inter first meet sarah and, and interact with her is when she's given joel the watch and then when she wakes up from the nap is where you start playing and you know you you immediately grow to like her <laughs> and it's devastating when she dies but having a good you know 20 plus minutes thir you know 30 minutes to get to know sarah is really nice like you see her interact with people uh you see her hang out with this these old people and and she goes to fix joel's watch and it's just like it's great. There's some direct line lifting from the game with I sell hardcore drugs. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Um, really, really great. And then oh, the moment where she sees the old lady and she's coming after it. And the lady's got like, I couldn't tell um, if that was like, was that like hair in the woman's mouth? It looked like it hair, but then it also looked like... Um, it kind of looked like oh, it could be like nerve endings, like like muscle fiber, like nerve endings in the in the lady's mouth. Because when they showed another guy zombie later, he also had that. Maybe he was just chewing on some hair as well. But, um, like <laughs> that was that was crazy. Joel kills her, and you, I was freaking out. <laughs> like I know what happens, and I'm still like hyperventilating because it's so tense. And the whole sequence where they're they're trying to escape, they're driving in the truck, it's kind of like a POV type shot, similar to the game, and it's just frantic, and it's overwhelming in a sense, and it's just, it's freaky and scary, and you see that plane come down, that's an interesting uh, change, you know, I like that they subtly changed things, they didn't change things that changed the heart of the story, or like the overall vibe of things going down, but like small details that technically, like technically don't matter. Um, they change, like instead of a gas station blowing up, it's this plane blowing up. Um, instead of them getting T-boned, it's, I think they got hit by like a, a tire or a, a jet engine. I don't, I would have to uh, rewatch that part specifically to see like what they got hit by and how they flipped their truck. But you know, as soon as that happened, I was like already crying. <laughs> I was already crying as soon as he has to pick her up. Um, or well, actually right when she notices her ankles hurt and you you hear 
the like briefest little glimpse of her crying because it's because of the pain like the like the little gasp i was like oh <laughs> like crush my heart that's gonna be tough <laughs> um and the stunt actor that's chasing them great and then this yeah the the killer scene uh no pun intended sorry of the agent or the agent the federa federal agent yeah i guess um shooting them and tommy shooting the, the soldier and then realizing that ellie's dying and just like oh oh it's like oh it's so good it's so good um it, it feels weird to to say that a scene of a of a little girl like gasping and hyperventilating for breath as she dies is so good but like they crushed that scene um like the 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 restraint they showed right this is one thing that um troy baker has talked about when they were making the game is like initially he was like he was acting so hard in that scene and he was like pouring every emotion he was like screaming crying and and they're like it's not right it's not right it's not right and then he comes in and it's a much more subdued um whisper to his daughter right like he's trying to he's trying to like intimately convince his daughter not to die um and it and it makes it so much worse <laughs> for the for the player and the viewer worse in terms of uh like emotionally it, it's more devastating um because it it's not like this outrage or this or this cry to the gods of like why are you doing this right like it's literally just a, a father begging his child to hang on <laughs> and it's just oh like because you know it'll ruin him and it does and then it immediately cuts to 20 years later just like in the game and it's just like that that whole initial sequence you know it's it's the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game everyone that has played the last of us knows that that section of the game like the very first thing you do and they just rip your heart out of your chest and it's just tough it's tough oh it's so tough um and then they hit you with this other little girl in the present who's infected and immediately gets murked just put to sleep um and her body is burned and joel's the one that that throws her body in the fire and it just shows like how calloused he is because he just he does it with no emotion he just picks up this girl and chucks her in and you see you know exactly what the years of this has done to him emotionally um you know he he's not vulnerable he's just like a it's like it's like leather where where like it's you know when you lift weights and you get calloused he is calloused not the horse later on but <laughs> um he's just he's just a dude doing what he has to do to survive and it's tough you know he's he's doing underhanded deals with the agents selling drugs he's you know taking whatever jobs he needs to do um like him and tess are hardened indi individuals and and they do bad things to survive you know they're capable of bad things um anna torv uh as tess i thought is great she you know the original tess from the games is really really good and weirdly i like the look of her before uh they updated it <laughs> i don't know why they made her look like 30 years older with the update in the game um like she she's supposed to be what like mid 30s late 30s just like joel um well not at this point i guess she's like mid 50s L or late 40s early 50s i don't think either they're not quite 60 yet because joel was 36 now he's 56 i always considered tess to be a little bit younger than joel so maybe like 50 and i guess in the original version of the game she looks like 42 so makes sense that they aged her up i guess but i don't know i just thought the old look fit with the voice better uh of the actress that played her in the game um but anna torv 
is an incredible actress. If you haven't seen her, um, I guess the most recent thing people probably would have seen her in is maybe like Mindhunter on Netflix. She plays a FBI agent or uh, is she a psychotherapist? She's one of the things in, in Mindhunter. She's really good in that. But in my opinion, the best performances she's ever given, other than maybe the next couple episodes, maybe one, I think she's probably only in one other episode um, of this show, but if you haven't seen the show Fringe, um, it was on Sci-Fi, it's got Joshua Jackson in it, it's got, um, Frank, what's his name? He played Denethor in Lord of the Rings she is so freaking good in that show and that show is incredible john noble i think um fringe is an incredible show if you haven't watched fringe do it this instant <laughs> like like watch that show crushes it um i think she's really good as tess so far like she she brings a uh like it it looks effortless to her i don't know why like, like some characters, you can, it takes a little bit for you to be like, oh, okay, I can see them as this person. This, it just like, it, it looks like she doesn't even have to try to be Tess. She's just like, yeah, I'm Tess. <laughs> like she's battle hardened. She's gritty. She's sassy. She's kind of a bitch, <laughs> but she also has this like underlying, um, tenderness. I don't know. Um, but. Anatorv, great. Um, and then Bella Ramsey as Ellie. I was initially a little skeptical going in. I think that was the one casting I was most skeptical about going into the show as Ellie, but just <laughs> listening to her casually uh, and annoyedly drop F-bombs is so funny. Like, that's she has already captured the vibe of Ellie. Um, I mean, there's there's certain parts here and there where you're like, uh, maybe I wish so and so would have de delivered this line slightly differently, or that whether that be Joel or Ellie or Marlene or whoever. But like, I think Bella Ramsey has instantly captured the vibe of Ellie. <laughs> like if if when you hear her just like when she's like ah, like the water's dripping on her and she's like fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that is Ellie, like quintessentially Ellie. Um, and her just like being mean to the Firefly guards. <laughs> like, she, she's already crushing it. She's so good. Um, fantastic. Well, I guess, sorry, they, she came out as a uh, non-binary, I think, um, or gender fluid. So they are so good. Um, just absolutely crushes it. Joel wants to find Tommy. So this is slightly different from the games. In the games, um, Joel just hadn't heard from Tommy in a long time, and he, finding him was a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a surprise. Um, in this, he seems to be like gung-ho, like that's his plan is find Tommy. Um, you know, and I, I kind of like that change a little bit, because um, in the games, uh, Robert is just selling them guns and stuff, but now that it changes it to their, he's selling them a battery so that he can go find Tommy, um, adds a little bit more of a personal element to the mission and, and Tommy as a whole, right? Um, like that. Marlene, obviously perfect casting because she is Marlene. <laughs> like, if anyone... I swear to God, if I see anyone at all be like, I don't really like the casting for, Mar for Marlene, you can fall in a hole because it's literally the woman that played her in the game. <laughs> like, it's the like as perfect of a casting as you can get. It's her. <laughs> like, she's great. She's great. She's great. Um, She, yeah, I don't know. She crushes it because she's Marlene. Um, but yeah, then we start this mission of getting Ellie out of the zone, and they don't know why, but they got to do it. And I love that right off the bat, Ellie and Joel have this, like, antagonistic relationship. Like, they're just, like, annoyed <laughs> with each other, and they don't like each other. Um, like, Ellie, Ellie does not want some 
random old man <laughs> telling her what to do, right? And Joel very much is not gonna like be vulnerable with her or in, like nice to her because he, you know, it, one, he's not gonna open himself up emotionally to most people anyway, especially not a little girl. Like that's the one thing that he cannot go through again is losing another kid. Um, they talked about that in the post episode thing, but like that is a fate worse than death for him is losing another daughter you know, he, he won't survive if that happens again. Um, and that colors every action that he has from now on, right? Both the, that fear that that's going to happen and, you know, the initial resistance to, to the relationship. And then as it deepens the, the absolute loyalty to that relationship, um, just perfect, 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 perfect. Um, the imagery, fantastic, loved it. And then we kind of end on the scene of, uh, of when they find out Ellie's infected and Joel, <laughs> Joel has some PTSD with the guard, the guard that he sold drugs to not an hour ago <laughs> in, in episode time. Um, and he beats this man to death and just kills him. And they talked about in the post episode how like the contrast between Ellie and Sarah where like El or Sarah sees this happen and she cries and Ellie sees this happen and she liked it, which is, I think a change from the game. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see where they take that. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of the idea that Ellie liked it. <laughs> um, I, like they talk about her being activated like that, like that was a formative moment for her is is seeing someone protect her like that and, and fight for her um because it's not necessarily something she has had in her life right like she hasn't had that relationship with anyone um but i remember you know there's the moment in the game where she initially kills someone and she like doesn't like it like she is not a fan of it um and and well, I mean, she does it. She doesn't like it, though. I don't know. I'm, I'll am i hold out judgment on that until I see where it goes. But, um, yeah, she very much is a, is a different individual than Sarah. But Joel is still going to see Sarah in her. And that moment where he just flies into a rage and, and, and kills the guard and, and then they escape... And then you get the shot of the, the skyscrapers and it's like, oh boy, oh baby, it's uh, going to be good. And then the radio turns to 80s. I believe that was 80s, which means trouble. So I think the next episode is all about um, Bill and Frank, I think was the name, and their homosexual relationship. Um, so many people didn't get that. <laughs> When they played the game, they're like, Bill's not gay. Bill's a thousand percent gay. <laughs> Him and Frank were butt buddies supreme. Um, like, if you didn't pick that up when playing that game, you're oblivious. Um, but I think next episode is, is going to focus on them a lot. And we'll see their backstory and, and everything that happened with that. So, I'm very excited. But, yeah, this... <sighs> first episode was immaculate the from everything from the tone the music the set design the camera work the 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 costume costumes the uh the clothing design um incredible pretty much every casting choice beautiful like it it it's the this first episode is everything i could have asked for um from this show um because one they're faithfully retelling the story like they're not they're not changing random things for the sake of it being more bombastic or more interesting or the studios will like it more like they're very much like this is the story we're telling the story if if anything is getting changed it's going to be things that will not alter the heart of what we're telling um you know small details will can change like if a truck explodes or a plane explodes or a gas station explodes 
that doesn't matter. What matters is is the themes and the heart and and the actual literal story of what's going down. And so far, episode one knocked it out of the park. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I'm so excited to see more. Um, there's going to be nine episodes total, I believe. Um, and that sh <laughs> that should take us into what probably the end of February maybe going into March and then the Mandalorian season three starts and we just get more uh, Pedro Pascal <laughs> being a, a dad um, so this is gonna be a fun eight weeks and I'm so excited this is so freaking good um, and I have I have absolute trust in in where this is going but those are just my thoughts um let me know what you guys thought of this first episode down in the comments below um if you have not played the games uh and you're just watching the show um what did you think of this uh, if you are a long time player of the games what did you think of this i would love to hear both opinions i'm probably not going to um Sometimes when, when I'm watching stuff like maybe that's based on a series of books or other things, I, I try and censor spoilers. I'm probably not going to do that um, in this because, you know, the, the, the first game came out in, what, like 2009 or something like that? Um, so this has been a, a story that's been out for 10 plus years. Um, it might have came out in like 2013, actually. Um yeah, I think it was 2013. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to outright be like, hey, this is what happens at the end of game number two. But, like, I'm also not going to be like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Because I, if they're sticking faithfully, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to shy away from knowing that info. Um, so if you're, like, desperately, like, I don't want any detail at all spoiled maybe not the videos to watch right <laughs> but uh um yeah i don't know i'm i'm just very curious to see how other people um felt about this episode i loved it yeah i think that's all i gotta say though uh if you enjoyed my reaction please leave a like on the video it means a ton to me helps my channel grow a lot uh if you're new here or you find yourself coming back often hit subscribe ring the bell so you're notified when i upload and then if you want to see the full uncut version of this reaction consider supporting me on Patreon. That would mean the world as well. Since this is the first episode of a season, that uncut will be completely free and public for anyone to check out. And if you find that that's something you're interested in moving forward, um, then your support would mean the world. Sometimes I post reactions early on Patreon as well. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check out the Patreon. Your support, again, would mean the absolute world to me. Um, but otherwise, Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.